Good morning, brethren. Justin here. For today's message, it's going to be rather brief, I think. But for today's message, we're going to be reading in 2 Chronicles chapter 32. Really good chapter in the Word of God. It basically talks about King Hezekiah, a little bit about his life as king of Judah. He was a fairly good, fairly good king. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, as we'll see here in some of this passage. But of course, he also had some issues. He had some pride issues, but he did repent of it, and he made sure he got it right with the Lord. And as a result, the Lord had mercy on him. But in this passage, we're going to read the whole chapter here, basically, and we're going to see and learn about a truth that's very important in the Word of God, the Scriptures, and that is the truth that the battle belongs to the Lord. You know, and of course, a lot of you veterans out there in the faith, you know this very well about this truth that the battle is the Lord's and, and so forth. But I think at times, brethren, it can be easy to forget this truth. You know, as we battle, as we war good warfare for Jesus Christ, as soldiers for the Lord, as we fight the good fight of faith in our lives, I think at times it can be easy for us to forget this very truth. And so this, is, this message today will serve as a good reminder, and I believe it will serve to edify you to, to, to basically remember this truth, this very comforting truth in the scriptures. And basically, you know, we'll see that there's a king of, in this chapter, it's going to talk about a king, Sennacherib, who's, he was the king of Assyria, and basically he was going to come to fight against Jerusalem to take the land, I believe. But you'll see here that Hezekiah is a good king. He encouraged the people, he comforted the people of Israel, saying, be not afraid of the Assyrians, nor be dismayed of their great armies and their great multitude that was with them. But he basically encouraged them to trust in the Lord and that the Lord would fight their battles and gain the victory for them. So let's go ahead and begin here in chapter 32, verse 1. Again, we're going to read the whole chapter. And we're going to, basically, I'm going to take the, an, a practical application from this Old Testament passage in the Scriptures. And basically, we're going to see how it applies in our lives, that the Lord fights our battles as well. Even today, the Lord... You know, we might be battling something, brethren. I don't know what a lot of you are facing right now. But you can be confident that the Lord is with you. He is fighting your battles with you and for you. So let's go ahead and begin here, brethren. Second uh, Chronicles chapter 32, verse 1. And after these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains. This is a really good plan, by the way. He, Hezekiah was very wise to do this. Continuing, though, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the, of the fountains, which were without the city, and they did help him. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? You know, good point. You know, why, why should we allow them to have all this access to our water as they're coming to destroy us? Continuing here, verse 5, also he strengthened himself, also he, Hezekiah, strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David, and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people, and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city, and spake comfortably, comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us, and to fight our battles. See? Hezekiah, king of Judah here, is encouraging the people of Israel and Judah. He's saying, the Lord is, will fight our battles. He is greater than this army of Assyrians. Continuing here, and the people rested, the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. I like how the Bible words are like that, that they rested on the, upon the words of Hezekiah. They trusted, they believed his words, in other words. The people rested upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Verse 9, After this did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, send his servants to Jerusalem, but he himself laid siege against Lachish and all his power with him unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, and unto all Judah that were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Whereon do ye trust that ye abide in the siege in Jerusalem? 
Doth not Hezekiah persuade you to give over yourselves to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Hath not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall worship before one altar and burn incense upon it? Know ye not what I and my father... Now basically, King Sennacherib, he's being very foolish here. He's basically boasting now. You know, he's put on a big talk and a big show saying what him and his fathers have done in the past to other nations. We're continuing here. Know ye not what I and my fathers have done unto all the people of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands in any ways able to deliver their lands out of mine hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my father, uh, my fathers utterly destroyed? That could deliver his people out of mine hand? That your God should be able to deliver you out of mine hand? Now therefore let not Hezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you on this matter, neither yet believe him. For no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of mine hand, and out of the hand of my fathers. How much less shall your God deliver you out of mine hand? Again we see here Sennacherib just doing some more foolish boasting. You know, uh, verse 16, and, and his servants spake yet more against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He wrote also letters to rail on the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of mine hand. Just more foolish boasting, more foolish, more foolish words of King Sennacherib. Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jews' speech unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall to affright them and to trouble them, that they might take the city. Verse 19, And they spake against the God of Jerusalem, as against the gods of the people of the earth, which were the work of the hands of man. And for this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. Verse 21, And now look at what the Lord does here. Verse 21, And the Lord sent an angel, which cut off all the mighty men of valor, and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned, speaking of you know King Sennacherib, and he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he was coming to the house of his God, you know, of his, of his false God, they that came forth of his own bow slew him there with the sword. Verse 22, Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah, thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. Continuing here in the passage, and in those days Hezekiah was sick to the death, and prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and gave him a sign. Now notice this, brethren, but Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him, for his heart was lifted up, Therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Now this serves as a warning to each one of us, brethren, that, you know, we've got to be careful. You know, when we gain victory in our lives because of the Lord, we have to remember that in any, any area of our life, no matter what we gain victory in, whether it be over sin or, or just anything else in our life or any other area, we have to remember that we gain the victory because of the Lord Jesus Christ. All victory belongs to Him. So when we get a victory, when we have victory over sin, we cannot allow our hearts to be puffed up or lifted up in pride. We have to remember to be lowly and meek and humble. And that's what has happened to Hezekiah. He was proud. His heart was lifted up because of the great victory that the Lord had wrought for him and for the people of Judah and Jerusalem. And, um, <clears throat> and so as a, as a result, the wrath of the Lord was upon him. But notice this. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. See, Hezekiah was quick to repent. He understood that he was, he was proud, his heart was lifted up, and he quickly repented of his error, of his pride. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, and he himself, and he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all the manner of pleasant jewels. Storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil and stalls for all manner of beasts and coats for flocks. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him substance very much. 
Verse 30, this same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course of Gihon and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all his works. He prospered in all his works because of God, of the hand of God. Howbeit, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him, God left him to try him, to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. And God will do that in our lives sometimes, brethren. God will try us, to try our motives, to try our heart. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we serving the Lord? God will try us to see why are we laboring for the Lord? Are we, do, are we doing it with the right motive? Are we doing it to glorify Him? We'll do that in our lives, brethren. <clears throat> Continuing here in verse 32, Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the cheapest of the sepulchres of the sons of David, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him, did him honor at his death. And Manasseh's son reigned in his stead. Now that was the ending of chapter 32 there in Second Chronicles. But I also want you to turn with me to, into the New Testament. Go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're going to read uh, just three verses. We're going to read from verses 9 down to 11. It's basically going to be a, a more, basically it's going to be a further confirmation of this truth that the Lord, that the battle does belong to the Lord and that He does fight our battles. He will fight our battles and He will help us gain the victory in our lives. We read here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Christ Jesus, which is Jesus Christ. Again, notice in verse 9 it says here, For we are laborers together with God. God labors with us, brethren. You know, you got to remember that when we're, you know, laboring in the gospel, God is laboring with us. That's how we know that God is fighting our battles with us. We're not just, you know, we're not just alone in this battle, brethren. We're not just fighting the good fight of faith alone. We're, we are fighting and battling together with God. God is a man of war, and He is helping us in this battle of life. He is helping us to gain victory, and you need to remember that. Whatever victory you gain over sin, whatever victory you gain over an addiction, over a, a, a trial, you need to remember, brethren, to thank the Lord for that victory, because it is His victory in you. He has given you the victory by His mighty arm. And I, I just wanted to read that, that chapter in Second Chronicles because I, I believe it serves as a good reminder, as a, a proper application, practical application to our lives, that just as King Hezekiah comforted the people of Israel and Judah, saying that the Lord would fight their battles and give them the victory, so it is today, brethren, the Lord is fighting our battle. He is fighting our battles and He has given us the victory in Jesus Christ. And we need to remember that. And we just got to be mindful, brethren, that we thank the Lord for the victory, for the trials, for the hardships at times that come in our lives. We need to remain, we, we, you just need to remember to be thankful and grateful and humble, uh, knowing that God, that God hath given us the victory in Jesus Christ. And uh, he's, not for, he's, not, he's not forgetful of your work either. He, he, he knows what you're doing for him. He knows how you're serving him. He knows... He knows how you're walking with Him and how you seek His face in your life. And so, again, brethren, I hope this serves, this video served as a reminder to be thankful to the Lord and to remember to remember that the battle is His. It's not our battle, it's His battle. And that pray that you all take, take comfort in this truth. I pray that you take comfort and be edified. And... Uh, just please continue to pray for the ministry here in Tampa, the open air ministry, preaching ministry. Please continue to pray for the brethren as well that preach with me. Lift them up in your prayers. And uh, again, if you have any questions or comments or any prayer requests, please leave it down there in the comment section. Or you can just shoot me a message here on my, on my YouTube account. So again, brethren, I thank you for watching. May you have a blessed weekend in the Lord. And... Uh, 
May we continue to war good warfare for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may we give him all praise and glory and honor. Amen.